Hello, and welcome back to Onward with Scott Chesney. Uh, today's guest is Anita Gerharter, who is the CEO of Wings for Life. Anita, how are you today? I'm good. Thank you for having me. Oh, thank you for being on the program. You, you have a very busy schedule, but we're going to understand why by the end of this interview. Uh, Wings for Life is such a phenomenal international organization that has a very simple yet complicated mission is to find a cure for spinal cord injury. Anita, please tell us about how the foundation came about, how the organization came about, and really dive into that mission that's helping so many people with spinal cord injury. Um, the reason why Wings for Life was founded was a personal tragedy 19 years ago. Um, Heinz Kindergartner, a two-fold motocross world champion in the 1980s. He was asked to participate in, in a small local uh, motocross race in Austria. It was a charity race in, in favor uh, of a home of disabled children. And the organizers, they wanted to add a little more glitter and sparkle to their event by having such a prominent uh, racer at the start line. And Heinz Kindergartner was really keen on supporting them, but he was busy that day already uh, and he had obligations at a racetrack in Northern Germany. So he specifically told his then 19 year old son, Hannes, he said, Hannes, I want you to go and race there. So at least one of the kindergartner family is at the start line. And Hannes had inherited, of course, his father's love for motorsports. He was a, a talented motocross racer himself already. So he went there and 30, 40 racers at the start gate. So the start gun goes off, the start gate falls and they all rush into the first left-hand corner and Hannes was somewhere right in the middle and all of a sudden the rider right in front of him crashed and he couldn't make his way around him. He crashed into him. He made a somersault. He landed on his head. He broke his fifth and sixth cervical vertebra and injured his spinal cord. He then was... Uh, brought to the hospital in, in a life-threatening condition. And of course, his father was informed immediately, but he was hundreds of kilometers away from Salzburg where the accident happened. And so he called his best friend, Dietrich Mateschitz, the founder of Red Bull, who sadly passed away just recently. And he called Dietrich and uh, he said, something terrible has happened to my son, please go to the hospital and check on him. And Dietrich Mateschitz was told by the doctors, if the kid should survive, he will remain paralyzed from his shoulders downwards. Long story short, Hannes did survive. He remained paralyzed. And after the first couple of weeks, when the first uh, shock, you know, when, 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 when we were able to, to produce clear thoughts again, um, Dietrich and uh, Heinz Kindergarten together invited leading neurologists and uh, scientists to come to Salzburg because they wanted to find out, is there anything we can do to make the situation better? Is there hope for cure? And all these invited um, experts, they said, the hope of finding a cure is absolutely legitimate. The only thing missing is money to support this field of research. And this piece of information practically was the hour of birth for the Wings for Life Spinal Cord Research Foundation. So, you know what um, I find still fascinating to this day? There are no two spinal cord injuries alike. There are no two stories alike. And sometimes it takes such a devastating accident to bring about um, yeah. such an organization uh, that's on yeah. such a mission. Uh, you're funding uh, about 75, if I read correctly on your website, about 75 research projects right now that involve- Right now simultaneously, yes. That's it, amazing. Uh, let me ask you a little bit about the, the clientele that you serve, people with spinal cord injury. 
is that uh, obviously there's movement that's wanting to be restored, whether it be one's upper limbs, whether it be legs, uh, but there's also bladder, bowel, sexuality um, issues, um, blood pressure, is that where do you find your, your constituents, those that you serve, really putting the most emphasis these days? What's most important to them? Um, do you mean what, what's most important to the, to the, to the uh, people affected? The people affected by spinal cord injury that you're interacting with? I clearly can say it's bowel and bladder function. Yeah. Clearly. Those secondary conditions. Yeah. 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 Yeah, those, um, are the remind, those are the reminders on a daily basis. And I'm not yeah. sure Anita, if you know this about me. I've been paralyzed almost 37 years now. So I, I'm not surprised to hear that statement. I didn't from, know. I didn't know. Yeah, well, we try to keep it a little hidden. <laughs> but uh, I, I think it's still very interesting to this day how like so much research has been done. And yet we mm -hmm. people on the outside looking in think so much about movement, but it's those hidden parts yeah. of the yeah, that living totally. with cord injury have to focus on on a, on a daily basis. So that that does not surprise me. Um, so your organization has a, a global reach, yes. and one of your main activities is the World Run. Can you tell us a little bit about that activity as well as others that again reach the spinal cord injury community and others who want to donate and give? Mm. Well. Um, so we need a lot of money to, to, to finance and to support spinal cord research. And, and we have done a, a great job already in, in, in the past years. And uh, with the Red Bull company by our side, being our main sponsor and covering 100% of our administrative costs. So we can guarantee our donors that 100% of their donation actually goes to work in a laboratory or in a hospital. So this is already a big help. But nevertheless, throughout the years, we were always brainstorming. How can we reach out to more people? How can we create more awareness for the cause? And most importantly, how can we raise more donations for research? And in 2012, uh, an event specialist from Red Bull approached me and he said, Anita, I have written a concept. Uh, I don't know if you like it, but that it, it, that might be interesting for you. Let me tell you. So he told me about the worldwide run starting simultaneously throughout the, all the different time zones, no given distance as the finish line would catch the runners from behind. And I was stoked. When, when, I, when I heard it, I, I, was, I was over the moon and I thought, finally, this is the concept that, that we have been looking for all along. And we started to, to build it. Um, luckily, I didn't do too much analytical thinking before we started the project, because had I done that, the world run would have never seen the light of day. <laughs> because... There was no technical solution available at the time. So we had to build that from scratch. Um, I didn't think about the financial issues. You know, if someone is signing up in Botswana, in Peru, in India, how do I get the money into the foundation legally, not paying too, too, too many taxes? Um, communication wise, our website is online in 22 different languages. Uh, legally wise, uh, we have to comply to all the different legal systems all around the world in, in every single country where people are participating. And, um, but all these challenges kept coming up one by one. And we always found someone or a group of people who were able to solve it. And in 2014, we were running for the first time um, in 35 countries. We had 50,000 people participating. And that gave me many, many sleepless nights because we had never had the chance to test it before. I mean, we had done our very best to make it work, but there was no way to test it, only on race day. Luckily, it did work. And um, so in, in uh, next year, we are going to have, uh, was it this year? 
No, this year it was the 10th uh, edition, no, next year. Anyhow, uh, the, the, the World Run is, is, is a super tool to reach out to people, um, to, to raise donations, and also to, to give him a better understanding what it actually means to live with a spinal cord injury. And, and our big vision for the next couple of years is to bring 1 million people out onto the street uh, on, uh, on the uh, World Run Day. So, and therefore we need all the help we can get to reach out to as many people as possible. That, that is amazing. And uh, I know that a, a group of people from Onward actually participated in Lausanne yeah. um, on that evening. And um, well, speaking of Onward too, is that I know that again, very much involved with funding clinical trials. And uh, one of those areas is spinal stimulation that seems yeah. to be very promising that has been in clinical trials for over a couple decades now. Uh, I was just wondering as that what Wings for Life think about the uh, potential for commercialization, finally something being brought to market for the SCI population. Well, I, I like that uh, project particularly uh, because this is our most visible success so far. I mean, we, we have uh, had already major breakthroughs in, in different areas, but this one is visible for, 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 for the lay person. And uh, I, I hope that uh, this is gonna spread out uh, uh, and, and that lots of patients uh, will be able to benefit from it because it's such an enhancement of, of life quality, being able to get up again, to walk, it, it, it's, um, and, 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 and it improved uh, bone density, uh, circulation, uh, sexual function, you name it, it improved just anything. So it's- uh, One of those areas too, Anita, is which I find fascinating um, that I've recently learned about is blood pressure regulation. Mm -hmm. And knowing full so well that when you're able to regulate one's blood pressure is that you have more energy. So whether it be oh, being able to work, take care of your family, um, just want to get out and socialize more. I, I think that's a tremendous breakthrough as well. Absolutely. Absolutely. And, and speaking of clinical trials is that there's a website um, that's been formed by Wings yeah. for Life. It's very important because it, it, as you well know, is that it's so important that people with spinal cord injury, caregivers as well as medical professionals who are working with this population, learn about ongoing clinical trials. Uh, tell us about that website that's been formed. Um, we wanted to create a safe space for spinal cord injured people because they are surfing the internet all the time, trying to find ways um, to get better or to find a cure. And uh, there are unserious offers, you know, uh, um, it, it, I find it shocking that uh, um, people are treated with uh, unsafe methods and, uh, you know, they cost a lot of money and, and uh, people are, are willing to try just any, uh, just about anything to get better. And so we said it would be great to create a safe space for them. And this is what the, the SCI Trials Finder has become. So it works basically like a dating platform. So you type in where you live, um, the injury uh, level, whether you're complete or incomplete, and uh, how long ago the injury happened, and then you press a button and boom, you get all the trials that would be right for you. And then you have further filter functions, um, if you are interested in electrostimulation, in stem cells, in bladder function, and then you also can filter where this trial should be located uh, close to your hometown or if you're looking worldwide. And the trials uh, that the pop up, they have been carefully curated and selected by proven experts 
and they have been translated into lay language. So you don't need to have any medical knowledge. You will be able to understand what this trial is all about. And then you can make a real informed consent and you can be sure this is a serious trial. So there is uh, the, the risk of, of getting harmed is, is, is just zero. And you know, that's so important. And, and yeah. as you so well stated, is that there are too many people who, whether it be getting on flights, will go to the end of the earth to yes. regain movement and really not yes. test something. So to, to, to be that regulator, so to speak, and to help people to better understand and navigate all that's out there, because there are a mm -hmm. lot of people just looking to get your money and not deliver what yeah. it is that you're seeking. And again, I know nothing is ever fully promised. The, the regulation is so important. Can you state that website again that people can visit? Is SCITrialsFinder.net. SCITrialsFinder.net. Yes. Fantastic, fantastic. And, and my last question for you today is that, so what's next? I, I, I know we have the world <laughs> on. Uh, you're on a global platform, doing a lot of traveling yourself. Yeah. Where, would you, where do you like to see Wings for Life in the coming year? Uh, well, my, my, my own personal vision is uh, uh, that I'm losing my job because uh, problem solved. So <laughs> this, is, this, this, would be, this would be my goal for the near future. That's your um, personal mission statement. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Now, see, the thing is, lots of projects are now on the verge of making it into the clinic. So when we got started, there, were, there was only basic research and preclinical research and no clinical trials, not even on the horizon. And we went out there with broad shoulders, uh, promising the scientists, we can finance your work. And now that there are many projects on that step into the clinic, we have to keep that promise, which means in the, in, in the future, we will uh, need much more financial resources to be able to, to fund all the promising uh, projects going on. So I, I will be super busy uh, fundraising, even, even busier uh, than before. And uh, so a big part of this place, the, the Wings for Life World Run, the growth, of the Wings for Life World Run. And then we have some amazing uh, corporate partnerships. Red Bull Racing just promised uh, to raise uh, 2 million euros in 2023. So the, the team principal personally uh, promised. Christian Horner said uh, they are fully behind this. And uh, yeah, so this is uh, what's going on right now. And then hopefully, you know, we are, we are getting applications for funding every year. They are carefully uh, um, selected in a, in, in a highly selective three-step process. And so I hope we will receive many exciting applications next year. Well, Anita, it's absolutely exciting, everything that you're doing and, and spearheading such a phenomenal organization. And again, as a person with a spinal cord injury is that uh, you are absolutely instilling uh, like realistic hope uh, for those living with paralysis. So uh, on behalf of the millions worldwide, I, I thank you. And knowing full well in the coming months, we're going to ask to talk to you again, if you'll uh, come on and join us again. But if people want to reach you now, if they want to reach out to you um, and please give the website as well. But what's the best way that they can contact you? Uh, via office uh, at wingsforlife.com. So we can be reached easily or just go onto our website, wingsforlife.com. And um, there, there are multiple ways. We can be found easily in the, in, in, in the web. And just, yeah, reach out to us and uh, we are happy to communicate. Wonderful. Anita, thank you again for joining us today, and we'll talk to you very soon. Thank you very much. <laughs> Bye.